Nation, man, I just got done watching the WWE Backlash pay-per-view, and I gotta say, it was a pretty good pay-per-view. I was, like, blown away. It didn't, at first, I thought, it's not gonna exceed my expectations, but I was totally wrong, and this pay-per-view came out to be pretty awesome. There were a couple of iffy stuff, but literally, it is so insane. AJ Styles won the WWE Championship. My goodness gracious. WWE, you're actually doing something. Um, I didn't see it coming just because we we see these type of things before. We see where we want somebody as champion, but usually it doesn't happen just because Dirty wants to be a dick. But let me go through the match cards and just tell you what happened. Okay, so we start off with the um, we we start off with the pre-show match, whatever they want to call it, with Apollo Crews versus um, Baron Corbin. I keep forgetting Baron Corbin's name. Uh, Baron Corbin actually wins, and he wins with the end of days, and Apollo, I don't know, how are you going to push somebody, ah, man, Apollo, I feel like Apollo needs a new gimmick just because what he got working ain't working, I'm just being honest, I mean, he's over with, he's, he's over with the crowd, but his gimmick is so stale, he's just, he needs something else to help him boost to make, maybe a heel turn, I don't know, something, something to get him up there, I don't know. Uh, with the next match we have is the six pack challenge, the six pack match with uh, the women's championship, and I gotta say that that match was actually pretty decent. I, I I didn't have any type of problem with that match. I was in, I enjoyed it, and you know it was great. Um, I was so shocked when Nikki Bella got eliminated by Carmella. I see why they did that because they're having this little feud, and if Carmella eliminates her, that makes uh, Nikki more over with the crowd because everybody's like oh dang and they're booing but Becky Lynch actually wins the match which I was shocked but I was surprised at the same like I was like I was in back of my head I'm like Becky Lynch might win but at the same time like I was like maybe Nikki Bella <laughs> so you had Carmella and Becky Lynch the last people so the first person that got eliminated I believe was Alexa Bliss Alexa Bliss when she came out man she had the pink tails looking like Harley Harley Quinn from uh, uh, Suicide Squad and I was like yes Brad I was like she looks pretty over um Carmella it's like a lot of these divas that came out they got a real uh big pop you know and Naomi I her entrance, man, it, it, I don't know. It's a long entrance. I don't know if that's going to be in WWE 2K17. It might not even be in there. I mean, it takes forever to try to do that type of entrance. <laughs> so, there being said, Becky Lynch won, and she's the first ever um, deep women's championship on, champion on SmackDown. So, then we have, the, I believe, the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship tur Tournament Semifinals with the Usos and the Hype Bros. When I was watching this match, I noticed uh, when Asos came out, they actually turned heel, got a new attire, um, a new little bit of a new gimmick change. They still are boring, but they're they're progressing to be in heel. This is what I like to see from the Usos, because we haven't had this heel turn in about seven years from the Usos. So, great job for them coming out. Only problem I had was they actually took the win against the Hype Bros. I don't think the Hype Bros. Uh, needed to lose that match. The Hype Bros versus Heath Slater and Rhino would have been a, a fantastic match. Now the Usos, like, they, I was like, I was like, okay, I don't think the Usos are definitely gonna win this match. But for surprisingly, they actually won, and I was like, dang, wow, okay, we're doing that. I was like, okay, we're doing that WWE. We're actually doing that. I was like, you know what? Just, I mean. I don't know what the Hype Bros are going to do next. I mean, they might do something, you know. But, <laughs> shit. They actually lost that match. And so, the next match we had was the WWE Intercontinental Championship match between The Miz and versus Dolph Ziggler. Now, a lot of people were speculating that the Dolph Ziggler was going to take the title. But that was not the case at all. Literally, The Miz won. And the reason The Miz won was just because of Maurice. Like, Maurice was out there distracting the ref, trying to get the ref's attention. And I said in my review before the, the my pay review predictions before this that Maurice was gonna get involved, and she sprayed Dolph Ziggler with pepper spray. She sprayed Dolph Ziggler with pepper spray, and I was like, "Wow!" I'm just like, "Yo, they're actually going with that." I was like, "Hmm," because I think if Dolph would have won it, everybody been cheering, but like. You know, at the same time, what is Dolph going to do for the title? You feel me? Let's be real. What is Dolph going to do with the title? 
I don't think he's going to do much with the title. I, I just don't think he will. So, that being said, the Miz won that uh, championship. He won that uh, match with the um, Skull Crusher finale. Dolph was blinded as shit. He was like, I can't see. I'm legally blind. So, then we we thought, the next match we thought was going to be Bray Wyatt versus, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. But early in the day, Bray Wyatt actually attacked Randy Orton. Um, slammed his leg through a door and all that type of shit. I, I was like... I heard the rumors on Twitter that uh, Randy Orton is injured. Um, so I don't know if that was like a little, uh, you know, just like a storyline thing or he actually did hurt his leg. But Bray Wyatt, as you see that, he slammed his leg through the door and I was like, dang. So they're going with that. So in my opinion, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I think Luke Harper is going to come out and face Bray Wyatt since Randy Orton is not. But they bring out the Demon King, Shitty King. Now, being Kane coming out, I was like, oh, fuck. Because you know how you know how it is when Kane comes out. You already know how the match is going to be. So they had this no disqualification match. And by goodness, Bray Wyatt was tearing it up. Kane was tearing it up. I got to give it to him. That match was pretty insane. Bray Wyatt, jump, Bray Wyatt doing a jump through the announcement table on Kane. And then hitting him, slamming him through chairs and stuff like it was off the chain, and I don't know, that match probably lasted for like 13 to 14 minutes. It wasn't that long of a match, but it was pretty long. And so, I think Bray, I think Bray was about to get the upper hand on Kane. Then Randy comes out, Randy comes out, he's, he's, he's favoring the leg. And I'm like, Randy's about to interfere in this match. And he's actually able to, just because it's a no disqualification. So Randy comes in. Gives Bray Wyatt an RKO. Then Kane does whatever his choke slam, and then Bray Wyatt actually loses another pay per view match. Now, Tubby even actually posted on Twitter that the reason uh, Bray Wyatt won is because of a storyline mode. Storyline, but look here, Bray Wyatt hasn't won that many pay per view matches. Like, I mean, the beginning of the pay per view, I mean, the beginning of the match, he actually won the no, he actually won. From uh, cause Randy didn't wasn't able to come out there, so they did a 10 second thing with the ref. So Bray Wyatt actually won one one match, then lost another. I was like, wow. I was like, you might as well not even count the first win. I'm like, yo, just just shut that shit right there. And I was like, <laughs> but so you know you have Bray Wyatt losing another match. Um, I'm not mad about it. You know Bray has another chance to do something with Randy. But Randy, I don't know if he's actually hurt. It's probably just a storylines. You know, we don't hear any case. It's no, it's no kayfabe out there for that. So I think the final match was the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles. Now, this match was amazing. Yo, I'm loving the promo that they had for AJ Styles when they when he because they they mentioned him, you know, beating up John Cena, taking his armband and and using it as a souvenir that he beat John Cena a second time, and I was like, that is super amazing. Like, just go with that. If you could just make AJ Styles just for his whole career, just you know, representing that he beat John Cena, bro, I'm so with it. You know, I'm glad he actually beat John Cena. I mean, shit. If he would have lost the second match, I'd have been like, Shh. I just don't understand. You can beat John Cena, but you can't. Never mind. But so this match started off. They were just going ham at each other. Dean was not getting much of the upper hand at first, but Dean started coming back. Dean started doing this and that. Uh, my friend MKG, he said he doesn't like Dean Ambrose because he needs to get a heel turn. You know, Dean Ambrose, I think kind of Dean Ambrose does need a heel turn, but I don't know how they're going to portray it. I feel as if if you're going to turn someone, you got to make sure you do it the right way because you just can't turn somebody and then expect everybody to cheer them. That's what they did with Natalia. They tried to turn her heel, but it didn't work with the crowd. You got to see, they should have learned. They got to, you got to. When you want to turn somebody here, like I said, you got to make sure you do it right. They didn't do it right for Natalia, and I hope they, if they do turn Dean Ambrose Hill, hope they do it in the right way. So, the ref wasn't looking, and AJ Styles hit Dean Ambrose with a low blow, and I'm like, no way. Now, people might complain on Twitter, hey, he won with a low blow. You know, he didn't really, I think they're going to, what they're going to think about this, they're going to probably try to compare this to when he beat John Cena because of the club. They're going to be like, oh, he won because of a low blow. If that low blow didn't happen, you know, he wouldn't have won. But let's be honest, there was a great match. I did wish, I honestly did wish that it would have finished 
with this AJ Styles just beating it with a Styles class without the low blow. But, you know, it's okay. And I'm totally forgetting one more match, and I will cover it in just a minute. So then he hits him with the low blow, and actually uh, AJ Styles wins the WWE Championship. Now, let me rewind back. So after the Usos beat the Hype Bros in the semi-finals tournament, we actually have the Tag Team Championship Tournament Finals with Heath Slater, Rhino, and the Usos. Now, we already knew what was going to happen in this match. We already knew that Heath Slater and Rhino was going to definitely pick up the win. It was very predictable just because Heath Slater needs a contract on WWE television because he's the only one that was a free agent besides Undertaker. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what show Rhino Taker on. Probably Raw. You know, he is a Raw person. <laughs> um, so, he Slater and Rhino actually take the win because uh, Rhino actually speared um, one of the Usos and he Slater was like, uh, get the pin. It was an awesome pay per view. Um, but yeah, let's go right back. So, World Heavyweight Championship match. AJ Styles wins the WWE Championship and like everybody loses their shit. AJ runs out the ring happy as hell, and Dean Ambrose just sitting there holding his balls like, uh. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Make sure you guys hit that like button and you subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Read Nation, we are out. If you want to see anything else, make sure you go check out my, all my other videos. And I got the results for some of the pay per view matches and clips on my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Like I said, deuces, Read Nation. Whoop.